Hi there, welcome to another episode of The Heart of a Youth Leader. Today I want to talk to us about um, a variety of things really, but it all comes down to being part of a team. Having people with you, having people for you, uh, and, and working together. Uh, and there's this wonderful passage, this wonderful story that I want us to focus on to help us in Exodus chapter 17. Just a few verses in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 13. Let's read it and then I'll give us some things to consider. So it's, it's the Amalekites are coming to fight the Israelites. And Moses says this to Joshua, he says, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. And it's a wonderful picture uh, and, and it's spoken to me so many times over the years about having people on your side, having people who are praying. I love the reality of this. Joshua has a battle to fight. Uh, it's not easy. The Amalekites have been attacking the Israelites and the Israelites need to fight back. Uh, and there's this, 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 this reality of it's hard work in the trenches. It's hard work in the day to day. It's hard work in whatever we're going through. Uh, and so the first part of this story for us is maybe you're feeling a bit like a Joshua, that you're just in a hard working job at the moment or ministry's tough or it feels like you're getting no... Um, uh, release or no no um, advancement or, or no successes, no fruitfulness at the moment. And it's like, how long can I go on? And for me, the first thing to say is, who's got your back? Who is watching over you, cheering you on, praying for you? Uh, because Joshua knew he had Moses standing with the staff of God. The staff that separated the Red Sea, the staff that brought water from a stone. It wasn't just holding a stick, it was his dependence on God and that kind of promise that God is with them. Uh, and so Joshua had his trust in Moses. Who do you have your trust in? If you're uh, thinking of the daily grind, the daily challenges of ministry, who is it that's cheering and praying for you? Uh, hopefully it might be uh, if you're a volunteer and you're perhaps fortunate enough to have an employed youth worker or children's minister or family worker who is praying for you and cheering you on. If not, maybe it's the church leader, the vicar, the minister. Uh, but we need to have someone cheering us on as we go about doing what we think God's calling us to do, don't we? Then there's Moses. Moses realises actually his role in this battle is to worship God. I love the way in the Old Testament worship is used in battle so much. There's that wonderful story of the walls of Jericho coming down to the sound of worship. That uh, worship is uh, something that moves, that, that advances God's kingdom. Uh, and we need to be worshiping, we need to be praying you know, it wasn't who was who was fighting more, Joshua on the ground with the people or Moses with his prayers and in his worship with the heavenly realm. It's hard to say, but but we need people who are praying for us because without the prayer, without the worship, the fight is meaningless. It's just it's just destruction. Uh, and we want to be being building the kingdom of God, not defeating. We want to be blessing and bringing love to those around us. And that transformation happens by the spirit. Uh, and so uh, my second thing is not only, firstly, does Joshua, if you're a Joshua, you need someone who's praying for you. Who have you got praying for you? Who have you got cheering you on? Secondly, as a Moses, who are you cheering on? 
You know, we can all cheer on others. We can all pray for people. I love it uh, when uh, one youth group I used to run, run uh, they drop their, the parents would drop their children off and they were the 14 to 18s, you know, the typical teenage years. Uh, there, there was a time when the parents would drop off their children at the church and we'd have our youth group for a couple of hours. And in those couple of hours, all the parents got together in one of their houses to have cups of coffee and tea and to pray for the youth group as it was happening. I am convinced we saw special things happen in our youth work in those years because of the prayers of the parents. Uh, and interestingly, as I reflect back, I can see how many of those young people are still walking with the Lord. And I'm convinced it's not down to what we did in the youth group, it's down to what their parents were doing while we were at the youth group. Uh, and, and so who's praying for you? And who can you be praying for? And then I love this picture of Moses, that when he lifts his hands up to worship, lifts his hands up to pray, the Israelites take ground. And when he struggles and he gets tired, because if you've ever held your hands up for a while, they get tired. And as he starts to lower his hands, they start to lose ground. Uh, and there's power in worship. And so what happens is Aaron and her stand either side of Aaron. I love the fact they get him a stone to sit on. It's like, yeah, Moses, this is hard work. Spiritual warfare is hard work. Praying and worshiping can be hard work. And so they help him. Sit here because we need your hands up. And one stands either side and helps hold those hands up in worship because nothing is going to let the Israelites down in this. We're going to do all we can to be dependent on the Father. And maybe you're a lone youth worker in a church or a lone families minister and you're finding life really hard right now. My challenge to you is who can you ask to stand with you? Who can you ask to hold your hands up in worship? And let's remember our primary calling is to love the Lord our God. It's not to do the ministry, it's not to do all the stuff, it's not to do all the teaching and to do all the silly games and the, whatever it is we, 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 we count as important. Our primary calling is to worship. And out of that worship comes success, comes fruitfulness, comes victory, comes advancement for the kingdom of God. And we need to be doing all three. Sometimes we'll be the Joshua on the battlefield, finding it hard, rolling up our sleeves, getting dirty. Sometimes we'll be Moses, overseeing the ministry, praying for it, asking God to show us what he wants us to do. And sometimes we need to be supporting those people. Sometimes we need to be coming alongside. There's three distinct roles. They're not exclusive. We can do different, different roles for, with different people. You might want to see Moses as your church leader sometimes. What can you do to come alongside him or her to help him or her keep their hands in the air in worship, their dependency on God for what he's asking them to do with the church fellowship that you're part of? It's a biggie, but it's important because they all go together. All three different roles go together to enable the Israelites to defeat the Amalekites. And there's this wonderful uh, verse a bit later on where uh, Moses puts down a stone and says, this is where the banner belongs to the Lord because his name in lights is over this battle. And we want his name in lights over our ministry. We want his name in lights, his banner over us for what we are trying to do to build the kingdom of God in this place, in this time. So this week, why don't you think about who do you need to be helping you? Who do you need praying for you? If you're on your own, find an Aaron, find a her. Say, I need, I need some people to help me, to, to keep me worshipping, to keep me listening, to help me sound things out, chat things through and chew it over so we know what God's asking us to do. Don't do it on your own. And equally, if you can see someone doing it on their own, maybe you could offer, can I pray for you? Can I help at all? What can I do to help you uh, worship the Lord and be obedient to whatever he asks you to do? Go for it. Mm -hmm.